Welcome, welcome, welcome to Shiloh Fire Hour. Thank you for joining. Thank you for being part of this amazing session. Thank you for being a family and thank you for being uh, part of this platform. Uh, we can ask you to share the broadcast. Let others know that we are now live. We are now online. And as is our custom, we always welcome, acknowledge and appreciate the Holy Spirit who makes everything work. Dear Holy Spirit, we appreciate you. We honor you. We reverence you. We glorify your name. We magnify you lord mela ompala taleta pola talaba we glorify your name we magnify your name you are amazing you are amazing kosha tabarada holy spirit you are amazing holy spirit you are amazing we give you the praise we give you the honor we give you the gr glory and honor in this place because of the grace that you have given us because of the grace that you have given us <clears throat> in the name of jesus we honor you we reverence you. We magnify your name. Thank you, Lord, for your grace made available. Thank you, Lord, for your spirit made available. Thank you, Lord, for your power made available. Thank you for your understanding of your word. Thank you, Jesus. We honor you. We reverence you. Shala borosata bakadash. In Jesus' mighty name, we have given thanks. And the title of my message this afternoon is Warring with Prophecy warring with prophecy we are going to the same scriptures that we used yesterday particularly first timothy chapter number one the verse number 18 the verse number 18 this charge i commit unto thee son timothy according to the prophecies which went uh, before on thee that thou by them mightest war, war a good warfare so um you know what 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 i shared yesterday was um that when jesus was teaching us to pray he said um as it is in heaven so in not on so in earth and i give an illustration where people were created from the earth from the ground and then when they were created from there i was actually showing you and giving you light as far as what jesus was uh talking about concerning us being the earth so when he's saying your will be done in heaven so in earth or in earth as it is in heaven he was talking about us he was talking about us so on this scripture there is a, a statement i want you to to look at he said according to the prophecies which went before on thee which went before on thee so when when you look at that verse Many times we talk about prophecies that went before as if we are talking of words that were spoken ahead of us or before us and yet the words are on us. So in other words, there is prophecy on me. So the prophecy is not far. The prophecy is actually on me. And the prophecy is concerning me, but the prophecy is on me. Is on me. Now, 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 look at this. Look at this. The reason why I am talking about warring with prophecies or engaging uh, prophecies through warfare, it is because as much as your dreams are good, are beautiful, scriptures are nice, you have actually read the word of God and you have known your identity, what God ordained you to be and what he expects you to become and what he wants you to become, it will die as a wish or it will just pass as a wish and it will not come to pass. If prayer is not involved. So the admonition of Paul to Timothy is wage a good warfare or a war a good warfare according to the prophecies removed before that are on you. So it means you are praying with the prophecies. You are praying with the prophecies. So any prophecy that comes on you and when I say prophecy most people will be like I've never been prophesied to. There is no person on earth that does not carry prophecy on his head. So long you have the Bible and you have heard what God said in the Bible concerning you, concerning the church, it means you have prophecy on your head. Remember, it says we have a more sure word of prophecy. A more sure word. Actually, this one is more sure than the one that Pastor Aldridge can actually speak to you. This is a more sure. So every time when you hear the word of God being taught prophetically, being taught by the anointing, being taught in the presence of the Holy Spirit, that's the prophecy on your head. That's a prophecy on your head. Now look at this. Look at this. There is something that I discovered that um, makes people not to pray. 
and that makes people to be complacent and weak and prayerless. All right. Give me Daniel chapter number 9. Verse number 2. Daniel chapter number 9. Verse number 2. It says, In the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, understood by books the number of the years whereof the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah the prophet that he would accomplish 70 years in the desolations of Jerusalem. Now look at this. The first thing is, there is a year that Daniel understood. And then he did not just understand, he understood by books. So that's number two, books are involved. And number three, hmm, he then discovered the number of years he then discovered the number of years that these people should have taken in bondage. Which means as far as the limitation, affliction, problems, challenges, bondage that the children of Israel were going through, God had given it an expiry date. Now, there is a year now that Daniel understood by books the number of years that they were supposed to be in bondage. He did not understand by seeing a vision. He understood by books. Which means the moment he got to books, the understanding imparted to him. This is a prophet that could hear from God. And yet he needed books because sometimes the things that God has already spoken have been captured in a book somewhere. That's why we have Isaiah. That's why we have Matthew. That's why we have Colossians. So he might not tell you the things that he has already spoken to Apostle Paul, which he has put into writing. And that becomes a word of prophecy on your head. Now, the day he sang, in the year of his first reign, I understood by books. It means his problem started by lack of understanding. And it ended in the beginning of his understanding. So the moment he understood something took place, number three, remember I said, I'll, I'll tell you why people are weak. Verse number three, and I set my face unto the Lord to seek by prayer and supplications with fasting and sackcloth and ashes and I prayed unto the Lord my God, which means any prayerless person is prayerless because they don't have understanding. The moment understanding is imparted to you by reading, it fuels you into a life of prayer. You did not hear this. So prophecy should fire you up for prayer. Not just prophecy, but an understanding of prophecy. And I will keep on going back to the point that I said, you might not have been prophesied to by a prophet directly. So long you have the Bible, there is prophecy on your head. Ah, so the prophecy that is on your head, hmm, the prophecy that is on your life only comes to pass when number one, you understand it and number two, you engage in prayer. So without prayer, without prayer, the prophecy will not, will not take place. Ah, Now look at this, look at this, look at this. When we engage prophecy according to scripture, so many people, they think it's not spiritual, it's physical, because there is a, a book. I want to see some lightning thunders and so on. No. Do you realize that the children of Israel, there was a prophecy which was then captured in a book, which said they are supposed to be in bondage for 400 years. And the beginning of their deliverance started only when they prayed. Exodus chapter number 2, verse number 23. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Hmm. He said, And it came to pass in the process of time that the king of Egypt died and the children of Israel sighed by reason of the bondage and they cried and their cry came up unto God by reason of the bondage. Which means when the bondage was there and the king was alive, their eyes were closed. 
But when the bondage increased and the king died, their eyes were opened and they then cried to God. And when they cried to God, something powerful happened. Do you realize? Exodus, the same Exodus, the same chapter number two. Oh, my God. I'm giving you understanding. Mm-hmm. Verse number 24 says, And God heard their groaning, and God remembered his covenant with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. My question is this, God, did you forget? In other words, he is saying, without your prayer, I am not reminded. So I cannot act on your behalf unless you for my intervention. My God, my God. Do I still have people online? Yes. <laughs> Something powerful happened. A reminder came through cry as if God forgets. And yet, it was not an issue of just God forgetting. No, it was an issue of prophetic agenda activation through prayer. Which means the prophecy was there. The years were there. And guess what? When they then cried, their deliverance took place the 430th year. So, it means they prayed the time they were supposed to move out. So they were never supposed to pray the time they were supposed to move out. They were supposed to pray maybe 308 years. The 308th year, they start praying so that when the season or 400 years arrives, they move out. Because when you pray, you begin to enter into the process of the deliverance that must take place. So the birthing of the season of the 400 did not come to pass because these guys were not praying. So the delay was not because of the strength of Pharaoh. The delay was on the complacency of Israel. The devil is not big. But what makes him look like he is big, the delay is not caused by him, but by Christians who are not committed and devoted to their success. Had they known what God had prepared for them in the Bible, in the book, they would have prayed. So the lack of understanding is leading to prayerlessness. And the prayerlessness is leading to the delay. And there are people that will die without seeing any prophecy come to pass. Now, the Bible is saying, they cried. Remember what I, I told you yesterday? I said, whether faith or fear, I know there is an answer. The Bible is telling us they cried because of their bondage, which means they had not been bound. They were never going to cry. Ah, no. So there is a kind of pain and bondage that is a sign that prophecy is about to be fulfilled. So if you know how to respond to the pain, to the bondage, that's when you come out of the situation. Remember, as soon as Zion traveled, she brought forth. So it is in the place of traveling, in the place of pushing, that you give birth to your prophecy. That you give birth to your prophecy. I'll tell you this. The reason why so many people think, ah, why would the devil monitor me? There is nothing about me. is because you do not know that there is nothing about you. There is something about you that the devil knows. Do you know people have been made uh, targets by the enemy the day they were born? Yeah. Five minutes and you are done. You pray as if there is no star on you. Let me show you something. Let me show you something from the word of God. About books. This prophecy that is in the book. This prophecy that is found in the book. Hebrews. Chapter number 10. Verse number 7. Hebrews, <laughs> my God. Then said I, Lo, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me to do thy will of O God. It is written away in the book. Do you know the challenge with Christians? The devil has read their books while they have never read their books. So the devil knows the plan of God that is written in their book, but they don't know their plan. <laughs> The reason why when it comes to prayer, you pray little. When it comes to 
giving, aha, that one I should not even touch it. You don't fulfill your vows. You don't, you just, you are not committed. And yet, do you realize that when there is prophecy on your life, when there is a word on your head, you have become a target. Okay. Do you know how Pharaoh knew? Do you know how Herod knew? It was books. Which books? This book, behold, it is written of me. So they discovered where it was written of Jesus and they killed all the children two years and below. No, 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 no. The wise men read something in the heavenlies. And when they had read something in the heavenlies, that even, listen, even the born again, even the ones that were praying in the temple could not read. They then followed the trail and went where Jesus was. Now my question is, had it been a satanist that had read the star to identify where a child of God is to destroy them? What was going to happen? Because the ones that saw the star were not people of God. <laughs> These were on the negative side. This is why I always tell you witches and wizards are more committed in the realm of the spirit than some believers that we have. We pray and we don't pray enough. We fast and we pray. You know, and then you hear Christians saying things like, I don't want to pray as if uh, the devil is on my, on my back. He's on your back. He is on your back. He, many times when you hear a person saying things like that, the devil is actually on their back. He's actually the one that has made them to misunderstand these things. You would say, I'm a new creature in Christ and everything about you is old. You see, when you know you're a new creature in Christ, use that newness to enforce the reality of Christ in your life. It doesn't just happen while he's sitting. It doesn't just happen while he's wishing. I'm going to let you go so that you find your own time to pray. But this is what I'm telling you. Prophecy on your head attracts warfare. You must fight. The devil, you see, the problem with people is this. Many times when things are going well with them, they are seated at their home like this. There is no attack from anywhere. They think there is no attack. No, there is what is called an incubation of attacks. I'm telling you. So you don't stop praying because it's, there is peace. No, you pray to maintain the peace. The devil doesn't want to see you at peace ever. He doesn't want to see you at peace. You rise to a certain level. And the devil doesn't want you to pass another level. He wants to bring you down. Do you know what he does? He acts as if he is no longer there in your life. He doesn't touch anything. I'm telling you. Why? So that he takes away your armory. He takes away your weapons of warfare. And you relax as if there is nothing. That is why most Christians only pray when they are attacked. And yet they were supposed to pray without any attack. Ah. Uh, uh. Ah, so, 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 now look at this. Men of God, help me. And I, and I want to become a born again believer. I want to believe in Christ. I want to really follow Christ with all my heart. Ask them before they commit themselves to the Lord. What's the reason that brought you to this place? Many times, it's not the love of God. It is a problem that has occurred. So without the problem, they were never going to come. So many Christians are actually demon inspired. They are not Holy Ghost inspired. Anyway, Whichever way, thank God they are back to God. At least they know where to run to. But it should not always be the case. The case should be you are always on fire for God. You are always on fire. You are always praying. You are always studying. You are always committing. You are always sacrificing and committing yourself to the Lord. You will never know the heights you are supposed to reach. Unless you commit yourself to the Lord. I've seen this. I've seen this. Uh, I, I remember posting recently, I think an hour or two ago, telling people about seasons. The Lord started teaching me about this years ago. Many people ignore feelings which are prophetic. You feel like I should pray more. It's not praying more. It's a season in you that is demanding for birthing. Because anytime, do you know that the, a lady that is pregnant doesn't choose when to, when, when, when to give birth? Yeah, she doesn't choose. She can be sitting like this and all of a sudden she, she feels labor pains. Is she the one that caused the labor pains? No, it is the baby on the inside signifying I want to come out. When a season is about to break forth, you begin to feel some certain pains. And certain pains are like, there is a burden to pray them more. You find yourself praying and there is no prayer point. Ah! You find yourself giving without a target. You see, the problem is this. Many people always give when there is a target. I want to give this so that God can do this. No. When it comes to seasons, it's not like that. God just pushes you to do things. You find yourself just doing more. And you're like, ah! 
I'm praying more than I used to pray, but I don't have a prayer request. I don't even have a problem for that matter. Because there is a bad thing. And do you realize the reason why the Holy Spirit has allowed certain problems is because you ignored him when he spoke without problems. Because your groaning will only come where is bo when there is bondage. Ah! <laughs> so when you see them in the mountains, in Domboshao, when you see them in Bindura, remember there is a bondage that has inspired that prayer. But thank God for such kind of bondages that can lead you to prayer. Because certain bondages will come and wipe you out of the face of the earth. When God has allowed it for you to cry, remember there is a season that is about to be birthed. There is a season that is about to be birthed. Mm. So your star was red, your books were red, and you became a target even when you were born. Before you knew it, you are a small Jesus. Huh? You are, you, are, you, are, you, are, you are given birth to in a manger. And already people are identifying your star. And they are following where the star is leading them to. Ah, oh my God. My God. I always ask the question, just what if the ones that saw the star were witches and wizards ordained to destroy this? And do you know the reason why it happened in that way when it comes to Jesus? It is because of the prophetic intercession of Anna. There was a lady that was praying for the manifestation of this prophetic destiny. Some people think, Jesus, most of the things that happened is because of the 40 days and 40 nights. Do you know the 40 days and 40 nights were begged by years of intercession? Somebody was praying in the temple for, them, for him. Somebody blessed him before he even prayed. Somebody held him and says, now I have seen the salvation of the Lord. It's time for me to go. Which means I was waiting. I was praying to see this manifestation. So, before he came into the womb of the physical, he was in the womb of the spirit, being prayed down by prophetic intercessors. Your destiny will not manifest simply because you chose. It manifests because you have prophetic intercession. How do I know that there is prophetic intercession that was demanded for that? Remember this. Before he even... Oh, oh, oh. When he came, the enemy wanted to kill him. And guess what? A prophetic dream came to Joseph. Do you think Joseph was a dreamer? No, but because of the prophetic environment that was set by the prayers of the saints, a dream had to come so that Jesus can escape, which means our salvation needed saving before it could save us. Your prophetic destiny, it needs saving before it can save others. Some of you are called for great things. Some of you are called to be giants. But the problem is your investment on the place of prayer, on the place of fasting, on the place of giving is not comparative. It's not reflecting on the kind of destiny that you have. This is why your star is not shining. You are praying little and yet God, do you realize this? God doesn't cause you to pray when you have a hundred or a million people under your care. He causes you to pray the hundred million uh, people prayer. No, he causes you to pray it without them. Because they are on the inside of you. When you then have them, there is another prayer that has to be prayed. This is why the Bible even tells us we do not know what to pray for as we ought. Because some of you are praying for shoes when God is expecting you to be praying for thousands. Some of you are praying for thousands when God is expecting you to pray for millions. Some of you, you are praying, oh God, may you give me a, something that will make me relevant to these 60 people. And yet God wanted you to go to 60 nations. It is because you have not read your prophetic destiny in the book. Behold, in the volume of the book, it is written of you. Discover your, your place. Locate your place. Locate your place. You are not small. You are great. It says you are the light of the world, the salt of the earth. A city that is set on a hill. It cannot be hidden. My life cannot be hidden. This is how you engage prophecy. My life cannot be hidden. My career cannot be hidden. My ministry cannot be hidden. My gift cannot be hidden. My marriage cannot be hidden. My identity cannot be hidden. And when you see Jesus saying, a city that is set on a hill that can be hidden, it means somebody was trying to hide it. If he says it cannot, it means somebody was trying to hide it. Who is trying to hide my destiny? Who is trying to hide my career? Who is trying to hide my business? Who is trying to hide my marriage? Who is trying to hide my ministry? In the name of Jesus, I reject their verdicts. I reject their decisions. I reject their announcements. I reject their pronouncements. Behold, in the volume of the book, it is written of me. I am the light of the world and I shine. I shine. I shine. I shine. I shine. My light shines everywhere. Shine. That's how it happens, brothers and sisters. This is how it happens. Yeah. 
I can't die in an entity when God told me that I am the light of the world. You have prophecy on your life. It says according to the prophecy that went before on you, on you, on you, on you. The prophecy is on you. So which means you are walking around with hanging prophecy. Unfulfilled prophecy, I refuse it. Unfulfilled prophecy, I refuse it. Unfulfilled prophecy, I refuse If God said I will make record sales, let it happen in the name of Jesus. But it doesn't happen wishing. We are to engage prophecy on the place of prayer in warfare. To contend with powers, forces that are trying to hide our light. I am breaking forth. And do you know the power of fasting? Say, when you read Isaiah 58, it says, Your light shall break forth. Do you know why it should break forth? It's because somebody wanted to limit it. There has to be a breaking. There has to be a breaking. Yeah, 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 yeah. My light shall break forth. And it is breaking forth. A career that is breaking forth. A city that is set on a hill. Where am I standing in life? I am standing on a hill. Where am I standing in business? I am standing on a hill. I am the best in my industry. I am the best in my industry. I am the best in my career. I am the best in my area. That's how you do it. Engaging prophecy. Engaging the 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 prophecy. Listen to this. Do you realize all these men that we then emulate and that, that we then love in the Bible, they were dreamers, prophetic men, but they made sure they did something to make their dreams come to pass. I love when, when, when Jacob had a dream, say, he saw angels ascending and descending, but he did not have power to do anything. Why? Because there was no physical manifestation. All he did was, the first stage was to anoint where he had slept, he had seen the dream. So in other words, it was that altar that he anointed, sacrificed upon, that established the dream. But for it to come to pass, he had to break something. He was separated from everyone when he was coming back from somewhere and when they separated themselves from him he was left with a man he said i will not leave you until you bless me are you telling me that he was not blessed at bethel he was but it was the establishment of a dream but for the manifestation ah there must be war the bible says he warred with this angel until the breaking of the dawn which means in the morning so all night he was fighting with an angel. You must bless my destiny. My identity must be changed. My life must be changed. My career must speak. I must not be barren. I must not be limited. I must go forth. And in the morning, he said, what is your name? So, which means sometimes identities are not changed in two minutes. They might be changed in a whole night of fighting with an angel. Fights. <laughs> there is a need for commitment. There is a need for commitment. L listen to me, guys. There is a need for commitment. Sometimes you should be fighting with these things even when you feel like physically you are losing energy. Drag. Drag. Be like Jacob. He was broken, but he kept on holding. Bless me. Bless me. Bless me. I will not leave you till you bless me. I will not leave you till you bless my soul. I will not let you go till you bless my soul. This afternoon, this morning, this evening, depending on where you are watching me from, you are saying, I will not leave you until you change my identity. I will not leave you until my prophecy comes to pass. The word of the Lord on my life, on my head. It must come to pass. It must come. This is what you do when God gives you prophecy. He has give you, given you picture to pray with. Pictures to pray with. Things are happening right now. Amen. Things are happening right now. Amen. My destiny must speak. My ministry must speak. You see, sometimes you should be angry. I remember some time back. Anyway, that, that's, that's a testimony for another day. But listen to this. Sometimes when you become angry and fed up with a level, this is how to pray. You don't pray like a desical. You don't pray relaxed. No, you pray prayers like you're a drunk man. Remember when they were in the upper room, the Holy Ghost came, they behaved like drunkards. Why? Because a new season was about to be birthed. A new season of the acts of the apostles, the acts of the Holy Spirit was about to be. Ah! When it emerged, it came from the platform of drunkenness, of men that were speaking in a language that could not be understood. Where men that were speaking in mysteries in the heavenly places. Because the Bible says, He that speaketh in a known tongue speaketh not unto men or this earth realm but 
he speaketh unto God and in the spirit he is speaking mysteries mysteries concerning your destiny mysteries concerning your identity mysteries concerning your life mysteries concerning your career mysteries concerning your platforms mysteries concerning your ministry that mystery in my family in my lineage I pray it out as I speak in other tongues in the language of drunkenness the language of the spirit the devil can't understand what hit him as I pray in power. Shabara kateketesha. Lebere vota la mande. Lege baro soto no boroto. I must give birth. I must give birth. I must produce. Karobo sata. The level of my destiny. Jade rehasa must change. Change my level this afternoon. Change my level. 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 In the name of Jesus. Change my level. 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 It's time to move. It's time to move. Akatekera. Appear to me. Make me like Jacob. Akretosia. Change my identity. Change my level. Turn me into the Israel of God. Turn me into the Israel of God. Turn me into the chosen of God. My identity must manifest. My identity must manifest. My identity must manifest. My identity must manifest. I need an encounter. I need an encounter. I need an encounter. I need an encounter. In the name of Jesus. Masata Rababa. In Jesus' name. Listen, if you know the kind of wealth God has ordained you to have, you will not pray relaxed. If you know the level God has ordained for you, you will press them more. You, if you know the things that the Bible promises, do you know, like I said yesterday, there are people that don't even believe angels still visit people. They don't believe the Holy Spirit still speaks to people. They say those were Bible times. Yeah, we are in chapter 29 of X. We are the extension of the Bible. That level of destiny that you have, it's your fault. The level of ministry you are enjoying today, it's your fault. If you are enjoying it, it's your fault. If it's that level, if it's lower, you chose the level. I want you to pray this prayer point in one minute. Angrily, change my level. Change my level. When, 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 when Jacob met with the angel, he was changed into Israel. Do you realize when Jacob was changed into, into Israel by, by that angel? He had had other encounters and yet he remained Jacob. Which means there is an encounter that changes your identity. Which is not like any other encounter. May this encounter be the encounter that changes your identity. From being called barren to fruitfulness. From being called broke to being wealthy. From being broke to being rich. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. What? You see, I, as for me, let me tell you, I'll be honest with you. As your pastor, I don't enjoy predictable ministry. Where people know, of course, people might know, even to be known, eh? if you think it's demonic, listen to this. Listen to this. Listen to this. Your God said you are the light. You must shine. Amen. I don't enjoy predictable ministry. Where I'm preaching and I'm healing the sick, I'm doing this and it's a predictable ministry. No, I don't want it. I don't want it. I want a supernatural one. A tangible one. One that is light, that is shining. Beyond where I am, somebody must hear. Somebody must be touched. This is what you should do when you are in prayer. You should not say, no, 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 no. I no longer want this level of business. I want my level to change. These cells, I no longer want them. You check the cells. Eh? Sometimes you have to break forth in levels of prayer where you sweat until everything around you becomes wet. And you're like, what's going on here? You are breaking forth. You give until everything around you, you feel like, is there anything else to give again? Because that's how you break forth into the next level. It says your light shall break forth, break forth, break forth, break forth, break forth. I want us to pray this prayer, change my level. But I don't want you to just pray. Some of you here, you must make a decision, right? This it to, to, to sacrifice, to give. You want to use this platform? They will show you the numbers. They will give you the details. But I want us to pray with our offerings and say, Lord, in my business, change my level. In my ministry, change my level. Open your mouth and pray that prayer. Change my level. Change my level. Change
change my level 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 aima kotari zemani akotari change my level change my level oh lord change my ministry level my ministerial level my business level my marital level akatero shade lebroko tokida lekeketoria anke kedusha thank on this kosha change my level open your mouth pray that prayer pray that prayer pray that prayer change Change my level, change my level, change my level, change my level, change my level in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. Masata Dabraha Sete Bahada. In the name of Jesus Christ. Listen, after this session, um, of course, they are going to load this sermon, the, only the sermon part at, uh, uh, on YouTube. I want you to repeat this session before we meet again seven before we meet again seven pray along get the word into your system get the word into your spirit and your, your level has actually changed and is actually changing and for today this is the instruction soon after this broadcast you are free to break your fast you are free to uh, they, they want to clap hands <laughs> you are free to break your fast but in the evening when we meet for our seven o'clock session i'm going to have some of these guys coming here with me where we are going to exchange as we pray prayer points for one hour straight we are going to be praying one hour one hour straight praying engaging and warring with prophecies engaging the spirit of god now go ahead and give your seat give your offering give your tithe send it through and the Lord will bless you and the Lord will do you good. And always remember, your giving is not only giving. It is also a spiritual transaction. It is also a weapon of warfare. I had somebody say, I don't want to give uh, as if I am buying my deliverance. What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? Your giving goes beyond just giving in church to say, I want to support. Hey, sometimes it's not about the support. It's about you. It's about warfare. It's about even what you get after doing that. Praise the Lord. So the Lord bless you even as you do that. And the Lord increase you and cause his face to shine upon you. Seven o'clock, we are here again. Firing on in prayer. Firing on with prayer points. One hour straight, non-stop. Praying in the spirit. Praying in the Holy Ghost until we see the changes we want to see. And tomorrow, remember, we also have our fasting up until midday. And then in the evening, we are meeting in Harare for our Friday service. Kona Kagubi and speak RCCG headquarters, 5.30 be early. If you are not early, you might sit outside in the overflow. It's going to be an amazing session. It's going to be an amazing, amazing moment. I love you so much. The good Lord bless you, increase you, and cause his face to shine. It's bye-bye for now.